If I asked you to find similarities between Macbeth, Joe March, and Sherlock Holmes, what answer would you give me? That they are all brilliant figures in the grander scheme of things, or that they simply do not matter because they are fictional. When I muse over these characters, there is a single amethyst thread tying them all together. I find myself bound by this cord too, and I am certain if you look within yourself, you will find this thread tugging at your spine. For the purpose of this speech, let us call this thread ambition. Ambition is the kindling spark within you that gives you a better understanding of your hopes. It charts a route to your desired destination and you get to be the one at the helm, spinning the wheel. But sometimes, when the waters become turbulent, we lose control over these ambitions. We allow ourselves to be swept off of our feet into a whirlwind of mental and physical deterioration. We become so busy chasing these ambitions that we stop eating, we stop socialising and thinking of our surroundings. Without realising, we push those we love as far away as we can get them. I speak from experience as I say this. As students, we are constantly bombarded with exams. And for many of us, this creates the desire to do exceedingly well. When end of year exam week arrived, I isolated myself, driven by this desperate ambition to achieve the best possible grades. In doing so, I seldom saw my family and spoke only thrice to my brother that whole week. Rudyard Kipling says in his poem, If, if you can dream, and not make dreams your master. I let my dreams master me, and I have a lot of regrets about that. Ambition can be detrimental, as Macbeth teaches us, but if we commandeer our ambition, like we practice our numeracy, our reading and writing skills, ambition becomes the water to our vessel. With ambition, we become the brilliant figures in the grander scheme of our own lives. And surely, that is bound to mean something. <laughs>